It's that time to check out the cryo rig. And this is another CPU air cooler. This is the H5 Universal. And this works on all AMD platforms, all Intel platforms. So 2011, version one, version two, version three, and 1150, 1151 sockets. So it's gonna be the ultimate winner against well, it's not gonna be the ultimate winner, because this is what you're here for. You're here to find out how well this does. And what we're gonna do with this is that we're gonna put it on the, the test bench and check out how well it dissipates heat. And then obviously put in a CPU, uh, 6700 k and we're gonna check to see how well we can stress test that under load with this CPU air cooler and how well this does. That's the whole point of it. And obviously looking at aesthetics and how quiet it is and stuff like that. But anyway, this is meant to be really quite cool. I'll see you in a minute. Oh yeah, check out these beautiful cables. Custom to any color you like. Eight pin, six pin, EPS connectors, 24 connectors. Oh yeah, Shack Mods, shut your mouth. Check out their website. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the unboxing, see how easy it is to maintain and put it onto um, my test bench. And also the good thing about this is that CryoRig have obviously gone to work and they've got measurements in all cases, all motherboards, and they're testing out how their CPU air coolers are with clearance of RAM. This is meant to be a limited or unlimited uh, version, so Affinity, whatever you wanna call it. It means that you can put any RAM in your uh, motherboard and it should be all right with the clearance and obviously clearance with the actual case and the uh, EPX connector and stuff like that. Everything should be really easy and straightforward. So it says five minutes on the box. We're gonna test that theory and we're also gonna have a look inside as well. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, so first off, Got the CPU air cooler straight away in the bag. It's got one um, 140 mil fan on the on the front. Obviously a nice braided cable and do not eat and all that, which I'm going to eat because I'm taking hungry. All right, that's that's cool. Right in this box because it's really well made. It's got the the bits that we need. They done it like this. Okay. Right. Okay. This is AMD and Intel as well, I think. And then they give you a CP7, uh, thermal grease. They give you all the this, this screws and stuff. What's in this side? And there we go, cryo rig, you never let me down. So I've got cryo rig right on the top of the screwdriver. And I'm guessing it should have the holes where I can just screw straight down into. But I'll have a look in a sec. And you get all your standard manuals and the bracket. Oh, there you go. There's the one for Intel. That's in there. So we're going to get this all out anyway, so you can have a closer look. We'll get rid of these this box. So now I'm going to I'm going to take this out first. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I swear, cryo rig. Do you just want to just put it on there for us on the motherboard? So this is the way the brackets need to be situated on here. And on the back, whoa, then it's got off the table. On the back of the bracket, it's got um, these little sliding uh, indicators. And this is for different types of motherboards for Intel and stuff. And AMD, obviously, you've got the clips and everything like that. And that's really quite cool. And then you've got a, a mount. And this is like, I think this is a rubber mount. And this goes behind the motherboard. So the, my hand's the motherboard, then it plays like that. So it keeps it nice and secure. Um, if you do it without the rubber um, bit, uh, the motherboard, I mean the bracket will be too loose. When you screw it on there, it will be all loose like that. So this is what that is for, to support it. So now I'm just going to get the screws out. This is really well packaged as well. I like it. Right, so these screws is what I'm going to be using for the 1151 socket. Now these bits actually screw onto the top of the brackets to hold them down and these will go like that they will screw underneath there like that I'll put the brackets on like so then I'll screw these down on here and then on the CPU cooler 
which is really nice and packaged as well. Right, come out, come out. Right, just got to be careful with the fins that I don't bend them. Right. So we've got 140 mil fan on the front here, nice and thin, and this is white as well. You can get different covers to match your motherboard or your build aesthetically wise. And this goes in here, and then you've got your screws, which are there, and that attaches to these parts here. So that's how simple it is, five minute job. So you get your uh, five, step guide to have doing this and all that but now we're just going to put this straight onto the test bench because i want to get test in i think we should time it let's put cryo rig to the test and see if it actually does only take five minutes so i'll get everything all set up first and take off that off the nickel back plate and the instructions are very easy to follow because i've used them many a times right so first off uh I think we should start the timer and uh, see how long it's gonna take. So three, two, one, go. Know what's going to happen we're here to torture test the actual cpa cooler as well as the cpu uh, no graphics card uh, using 1000 what uh, uh what yeah 1000 hcp platinum and tech power supply using an ocz 480 gig uh, using crucials elite ddr4 3000 megahertz speed and we're using a gigabyte motherboard which is the GAH170 HD3 and then obviously the cryo rig and a 6700K processor not overclocked or anything like that no more voltages or anything like that no CPU uh, fans CPU fans no more fans blown over the board or any graphics cards or anything like that strictly just a stress test on that and see how well it performs um, so let's get straight into it Paul. the dimensions of the CPU cryo rig that we're using is actually which one we're using uh, so it weighs without the fan it weighs 764 grams and with the fan it weighs 853 grams so a lot lighter than uh, the previous video that's up there that you can click on if you haven't seen that one which is another cryo rig video but with a beast of a cpu air cooler um so we've got tdp which is 160 watts which is a lot lower than the other one which was 240 or 250 watts and um, got a RAM height, ram, ram height clearance, which means it's affinity, so it means that you can easily put any RAM sticks under it and it'll be fine, no problem. Uh, we've got a good air pressure 1.49, um, got airflow 65 C, uh, CFM, and the decibels around 20 to 25 uh, decibels or 20 to 24 decibels. We're gonna test that anyway to make sure that it's not too loud. Like, um, this should be really like great for gaming, video editing, and all that sort of stuff. It should be no problem. That's why we're testing these high-end CPU air coolers. And this is obviously 140 watt. 140 watts, I'm getting all mixed up today. 140 mil uh, fan on there as well, and it's quite a thin one. And uh, yeah, it's 140 mil by 100, uh, by width 140 uh, by, by height of uh, 13 mil, so yeah, it's pretty thin. Anyway, it's 89 grams, and the rated speed, 713, 1300 RPM as well. So let's go through that. And website, I do like CryoWib's website, that's pretty cool. So let's have a look in here, what we got. So we've got a temperature of 23 degrees, 23 degrees, 23 degrees, 24. In here, it's around 18 to 19 degrees. And um, yeah, we don't want it to go over the top and top out, but we want it to do really, really well. Just only got a single fan, not two fans. And uh, at the moment, fans are spinning at 739 to 740 rotations per minute. Less, oh yeah, you got to see this in here. So idle, running between 3.88 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz. So we'll get rid of that. 
and then nothing else extra on top as you can see graphics are just standard Intel uh, 530 graphics and yeah right so we'll just get straight into it bench testing it we use Prime 95 so we're gonna run the tests um, at the moment what are we so everything's low at the moment idle temperatures 23 23 24 23 now we're gonna stress test it it's quiet that's going up Walker oh, Philip blowing now right so we've got fan speed of 1245 rotations per minute it's going up to 259 271 so not really up to, not over 1300, so that's not too bad. I can't hear, it's not too loud, decibels seem alright. I could get on and game and everything like that, knowing the CPU is going to be nice and cool. And we've got up to a temperature of 61 degrees on basically all four cores, because it's a quad core processor. So it says 12.45, September the 13th. And we're gonna run this for five minutes, so it should we're gonna stop this at 12.50. But so let's just go through the results and see what it can do. So now we've got the temperatures going and the fans are rotating and they're going and everything's just going crazy. So let's see. Well, let's just check out the results. They're right here. So the fan rotations per minute so far is saying it's heating up to 1300 rotations per minute. But it hasn't really gone over, but it's just saying that it's going at its maximum speed to keep the temperatures nice and cool on the actual CPU itself. And it's saying core 0, 63 degrees, 62 degrees, 62 degrees, 63 degrees, all over four cores. It's saying a maximum temperature of 65, 64, 63, 64, 65 degrees on the actual CPU um, air cooler itself. And um, I am quite... Where we got the RAM and everything, it's still fine. Well, I'm quite happy with that. It's not very loud, it means you can use it for gaming, video editing, photography editing, um, you can use it for office work and audio file work, studio music stuff, because it's not really that loud. Obviously, this is out of the case. Imagine it in the case, and you've got other fans going over the VRMs and stuff like that. It's going to be nice and cool. Anyway, let's. Uh, um, stop the stress test. Right, okay. So at the moment, the fan has uh, gone down to 898 rotations per minute and it's peaking to 903, 904 rotations per minute. Sounds really quite quiet as well. And uh, let's see the temperatures now. That's gone down to 26, 27 degrees, 28, 27 degrees, 26 degrees, and 25, yeah, just 25 degrees. That's all over four cores. Really quite stoked about it, really impressed. The thermal grease that I'm using, I don't know whether I said it, it's a CP7. I'll leave the link in the description down below as well, where you can buy this fabulous cryo rig. Um, CPU air cooler and I just can't get over the tools they give you, they give you the right tools. Anyway, if you like this video, you know what to do, and if you didn't like it, you know what to do, and also, you know what to do when it comes down to comments, and don't forget to subscribe, which I keep forgetting in my videos, subscribe for more videos like this, and if you like these videos, definitely subscribe because I love doing these type of videos anyway. Because whenever I'm building a computer, I'm thinking to myself, what CPU air cooler, what AIO, or what custom water cooling I should do. If you want to see custom water cooling or anything like that, you better smash the uh, likes, like quite a lot, okay? CD size, yeah. Anyway, I think that's it, and yeah, thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.